long, illustrious history of Cleveland sports has been the play-by-play -play voice of three professional teams that have folded. Only one man has been the top-rated host on the only sports talk radio station that no longer exists. And only one man has been voted by readers of Cleveland Magazine as the best sports talk host in town, only to have the magazine discontinue the award. Sports Channel proudly and carefully presents the voice of the Cleveland State Vikings. It's more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Week number three of our uh, multi-week contract here on Sports Channel. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to more Sports Channel and Les Levine. We're here till 11 o'clock tonight and a busy week. Now, uh, they told me, they promised me Mike Fratello would be here. Uh, half up in the booth. Any word on whether Mike has shown up? The word is uh, no. That, that's the word? What, what does he do to his team if, uh, if they're late for a meeting or a practice? He has to run laps around the building when he gets there. Okay. That's, that's all I needed. Every minute late. That's all I needed to know. You keep the timer on it, okay? Very good. I'm sure he will be here. Busy week here on the show. Tomorrow night, believe it or not, Mr. Know-It-All, Mike Trevisano from WTAM Radio in Cleveland, will be with us. Do you, do you believe you, that? You would think so. I mean, just like Mike's supposed to be here tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in well, theory. Well, we're also, also planning to have uh, the Pope, Elvis, and the President on this week. But if they, don't show, if they don't show, that's not my fault. Mine either. My, my bookers told me that they were on. Uh, tomorrow night, Mike, Mike Trevisano, he will be here. He will never miss an opportunity for free food and uh, for airtime. On, uh, on Wednesday, Joe Colley, uh, Joe Colley doesn't know this yet. Joe, if you're listening or watching, uh, you will be on the show Wednesday with me along with Kerry Smith from uh, the Ohio State Radio Network. He covers uh, uh, the Buckeyes on some 73 stations throughout the state of Ohio. And, of course, Ohio State and Notre Dame, number four and number five in the, uh, in, in the latest polls. They'll go at each other at South Bend on Saturday afternoon. So, Joe, if you're listening, um, uh, when you get your messages, you'll find out I want you on Wednesday, and uh, Terry Smith will be here. Uh, Thursday, from now on, the guys in the know will be here on Thursdays. And in addition to Hal Lebovitz, Joe Tate, the longtime voice of the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, will be with us on Thursday. And on Friday, good old uh, Ribs will be here. That is Al Bubba Baker. He will join us uh, on Friday. So a uh, busy week here. Hopefully Mike Fratello will show up. In the meantime, let's see if we can go to the calls first. We'll, uh, we'll start out in Rocky River. We'll say hi to John. John, how are you? 1.2. Well, I'll tell you what. Hey, Hef? Yes, sir. If we get a 1.2, a lot of us will be happy. A 1.2 isn't that bad. It is not that bad in television. Mike's in a Chevy. Huh? You're driving in a Chevy, Mike? Mike, are you there? I can't come out now. Goodbye. Mike, you got to speak up. Yeah, he's not there. See, there's something, there's something with guys named Mike tonight. That was Mike Fratello. Is this, is this really dumpling? Listen, Levine, I've been watching you on TV a lot the last. Yeah, well, it's more sports channel and less Levine. Listen, how do you think the man? I can't believe the the the, the team the Cavaliers are going on with this year. They got two guys. I got the name. What's the name again? You got it and had a pinko. Yes, you gotta be kidding me. You think no, it's not gonna be doing anything this year that left. They don't pronounce it. You gotta be kidding me. That's a Swedish name. How do you, th you, how do you think Tyrone Hill's gonna do this? Do you think he might have an injury-free season that left? How would I? Am I a doctor? I never I even know. I, I heard. I've never played one on TV. You haven't. How do I know if he's gonna be injured? You, you, you I think the Cavaliers should lose as many games as they can that left and get. The first pick in oh. the draft. Is oh, yeah. Let's tell Mike Fratello if and when he gets here. We'll say, Mike, don't you think it's a good idea to lose every game? Hey, if you know Mike, how do you think he'll handle that? Uh, if I know Mike, he'll probably make the playoffs again. You're absolutely right, Dumpling. Thank hey, you for hey, the hey, Yeah, best. yeah, yeah. Well, one other thing. Who do you think is going to take um, Martinez's place in the, in the roster for the playoffs this year? You mean on the, the, as the 11th pitcher? Yeah. Well, if they have to worry about the 11th pitcher, they got problems. Let's just worry about the three starters. We'll come back. Hopefully Mike will be with us. If not, we'll just take your calls on Sports Channel. expressed on more sports channel and less levine are not necessarily those of sports channel classic worldwide productions or its sponsors 
We cannot stop him from hanging up on callers. We cannot force him to take calls from listeners under 16 years old. We can't even stop him from being Cleveland's most loved and hated sports talker. But we can force him to be the most entertaining sports talk show host in Cleveland. Ladies and gentlemen, it's more Sports Channel and Les Levine. What? Yeah. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was outside. It's cold out there. I was out looking for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see him? We're back. Oh, we're back? <laughs> All right. Well, I was out in the parking lot looking for him. All right. You know what else I was looking for? Values like you find at Value Mart. You're the best. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, I'll tell you what. That, maybe that's where Mike Fratello is right now at Value Mart because uh, he's looking at the big 60% buyout on Samsonite luggage. It's incredible values. Values up to $175 now, just $89.99 at all. Five Value Mart locations. They've got the original Rock and Roll Hall of Fame polo shirts. Regular $30 now, just 5 bucks at all five Value Mart locations where you're going to save money every day on everything in every store. Brook Park at Broadview, Memphis Fulton Shopping Center, Shaker Square, Lee Road near Cedar, and, of course, in Middlefield, Ohio. Well, uh, Hef, I've got this uh, New York Times crossword puzzle book. If you want me to just go to it. Uh, why don't you go to the phones? Fine. Why don't we go to the phones? Let's go. Uh, we're going to go to Bryan, Ohio. Say hi to Brian. Is that right? Brian's in Bryan? Yeah. Do you know anybody in Walla Walla? No, I don't know no one in Walla Walla. Bryan, Ohio. It, I know where it is. It's right near the Indiana border. Yeah, that's right. I was at a wedding there once. Whose wedding? It's not important. It was 25 years ago. Oh, I see. So what do you think of John Cooper? What do you mean, what do I think of John Cooper? Well, the Jeff Mears, he's the bad coach. What do you think of John Cooper? I think he's a bum. Why? Because he can't beat Michigan. He can't, can't win a bowl game. That makes him a bum? He means a bum. Who would you rather have? I don't, I don't know. Oh, Joe Bugle? I don't Joe know. Joe Bugle. Yeah, there's a good one. Joe Bugle could play taps. Max, how do you like uh, John Cooper in Columbus? I think John Cooper's pretty good. So you don't think he's a bum? No. Okay. Well, but, Brian, but when Brian from Brian wants to meet you in the hallway, in the uh, in the parking lot, parking lot. <laughs> I mean, look at his win, win he's loss from, record. He's from New York, New York. Should I repeat that? No. All right. What's on your mind? Ohio State and in, uh, in, uh, Notre Dame. Yeah, I think Ohio State will whip them because uh, Texas Longhorns, they, they ran all over them. Ohio State's got one of the best offensive lines. So you think Ohio State will score 70, 72 in that game? No, I don't think they'll score over 30, but no. I don't look for uh, Notre Dame to score much more than about 14 points. All right, thanks for the call. Taking voice lessons from Dumpling, was I that, see. Was that Christopher from Columbus? That was Christopher from Columbus, yes. Yes, it was. Kevin's in Cleveland. Kevin, let's bring up the quality of the show. Okay. Uh, what do you think about Lisa Bercou going to work for Art Modell? What do I think about it? Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's her prerogative. And uh, she, of course, for those who don't know, Lisa, who was uh, here on Sports Channel on the, uh, on the broadcast of the Indians games, also with Channel 5, uh, has decided to take a job as broadcast coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. And I think you have to... Uh, you know, it's easy to look from the outside, but uh, s there are certain uh, considerations you uh, you make when you have when you get a job offer, and and I'm not in her shoes, so I can't make a determination if it's right or wrong. You look really good in her shoes, by the way. <laughs> I uh, I think she's about a size six and a half. No, I don't think I'd look good in her shoes at all. It's a decision she had to make. I'm sure it was a tough one, but but uh, I, I'm not going to sit here and condemn her for that. Is there any di difference between what she did and what Ozzy did? I mean, if, is there any difference? Uh, with regard to it uh, being uh, well, betraying it's, it's Cleveland. It's a job. Ozzy's a little bit different. Ozzy played with the organization. Ozzy was with the organization. He knows what the city is. Uh, Lisa's in the, uh, in, in the broadcast field. Uh, no, I don't compare that at all. There's no way you can compare the two. Okay. Thank you for the call. What do you want to do? Do we have time for another call? Sure. sure. Let's go to Russ. He's down in Irvine, Kentucky. Hi, Russ. Russ, go ahead. Ah, uh, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? Uh, how about them UK Wildcats? Yeah, how about them? What's with the quarterback, Couch? Uh, what's his What's his problem? Uh, football? Are you kidding? Oh, you're talking, talking basketball. About basketball. Let's it's, get real. It's September. Hey, you know they're coming up to Cleveland to play Ohio State at the Gund Arena. Oh, really? No, O'Reilly. Hate, hate to have to beat you that bad. Be what do you mean, beat me? 
uh, beat Cleveland. No, it's Ohio State, the armpit sir. of the world. Hey, why, I got a great idea. Why don't Sports Channel uh, get some extreme championship wrestling and take this crap off? Now, that makes sense. Can we do that, Hef? I'm sorry? Any chance to get extreme uh, championship wrestling and get this crap off? Absolutely. Let, let's get this crap off with a break, and we'll come on back on Sports Channel. Sports Channel proudly and carefully presents more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Hef, I got an idea how we can find uh, our guest, Mike Fratello. So, I'm going to call InfoData Incorporated. <laughs> they can locate. No, seriously, they can locate anybody in the United States. Oh, I know you're serious. No, I'm. I'm serious. We can call them right now at uh, 514-1400 in the Cleveland area or 1-800-750-2101. They're open 24 hours, and in most cases, they can find people within 24 hours. Now, now, all we have to do is call and just give the name Fratello. Now, is it just? People they can find? Or or what? Oh, I haven't been able to find my glasses for about no, three no, no. weeks. No, they can't find your glasses. Okay. They can find people. This is incredible. I don't know if they can find Mike Fratello, but they, I'll tell you what. If you're looking for somebody, do you have any old girlfriends? I know you're married and all that stuff. Do you have any old girlfriends? Do you ever wondered what happened to them? Hello? <laughs> all right, never mind. Let's try this. Do you have any? Never, no, let's try this. Do you have any old friends, like college roommates? Sure. That, all right. And, or army buddies? Army buddies. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good answer so far. Uh, you're looking for them? All you have to do is call InfoData at the, in Cleveland. It's 514-1400 or 1-800-750-2101. I was in their office the other day, and they said, go on, try me. So I gave them a name of a fraternity brother, just the last name, and boom, they found them within five minutes. It was. Oh, see, I thought no matter who you are, they're going to find you an Army buddy. No, 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 no. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, uh, are there any Army buddies of Les Levine out there? No, that's not how it works. Okay. You go and you give them the information, you give them anything, you can tell them if you say within five years how old they are, they can find these people. It's absolutely shocking. incredible. It is shocking information. If you're ever wondering about anybody from your past, you can call InfoData at 514-1400 in Cleveland or 1-800-750-2101. Do they at all share their methods? No, uh, but uh, I'll tell you what concerned me about them. This is kind of scary. No, you know, I'll tell you what concerned me about them. They wanted to talk to me about doing some promotion on the show. They, they didn't know how to find me. <laughs> no, that's not true. We better go to calls. No, that's not true. Info data, they'll find anybody, whether they want to be found or not. 514-1400 in Cleveland, 1-800-750-2101. You can call them right now, find out where Mike Fratello or anybody else is. Let's go if to... If you call them and say, my name's Mark, do they say, we know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear a funny story? Sure. You know Howie Chizik. Howie, of course, who yeah. uh, come... By yeah, the way... Howie. Yeah, if you say when Howie's on the air, if uh, you're on the air with us and, and you say, uh, uh, thanks, Howie, you'll, you'll win a Hungry Howie's Pizza. About 20 years ago, Howie, Howie and I were working at the same radio station in, in Akron. And we, a guest was on, I don't remember his name, but he claimed to be a psychic who can make psychic phenomena happen. And he claimed that he controlled, because he was upset at Carol Rosenblum, the then owner of the Baltimore Colts, Remember Super Bowl V when the ball was fumbled and tipped around Absolutely. and all kinds of stuff, they, and Baltimore won it in overtime? He was very upset with Carol Rosenblum, so he made the ball do strange things. He, he said he controlled passes and, and made them go to the wrong people and tip off hands and everything else. And he also said how he, he absolutely controlled a lot of events in history. So he gets off the show, and he's standing in front of a door, and he says, and he says uh, can somebody tell me where the men's room is? And we said, you're the psychic. You go find it. Listen, you want to see how InfoData works so well, Hef? Hef? I'm here. We called InfoData looking for Mike Fratello. Right, here he is. And look what happened. Mike, Fra we found him. We found him. Mike Fratello. I told you not to get so dressed up. How are you? Good. Have a seat. Have a seat. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I was just Take down off your tie. Just down at the game. Just down What's at the game. What's going on? 6-6? Six, six? Yeah. No, a uh, home run just now. We're up 7-6. Who hit it? 7-6, Ramirez. Terrific. Terrific. Say hi to Boy Sherman, David Modell. Somebody, <laughs> says, somebody <laughs> says the secret word tonight. They win three cigars. We had a cigar every night. I'm going to show you the secret word. And just tell everybody, don't say what the word is, but you'll agree it's an easy sports word. Is that correct? Or do I have it upside down? Yes, no, Whatever. I have that. A I, very easy uh, yes, sports yes. word. Yes, they very should easy. get that. 
we have, you know, we have a big budget on this show, Mike. And so we have gotten for you the new Fratello Strader. <laughs> I like here. it. Very nice. And you can use this with your team, and you have your own. Very nice. Thank you. Your own. Thank you. Pencil there. Now, <laughs> you like that? You think that'll work you on the side? Started out with an X for defense. <laughs> <laughs> can you give us an idea what what you do in a huddle? On, on your Fratello straighter here. Let's say uh, you're down by one and you've got uh, 12 seconds left and you got the ball out at side. Well, court. We so what do you on do? our little chart, we have our court already drawn on there, so they have an understanding, and there's a three point line that goes around it. And then we try to set up, if it's an out of bounds play from the side, we tell them who's going to take the ball out of bounds, what the person's number is. We set up our our other players on the when floor. When you say the number, you're talking about one through five, or you're talking about uh, the we number on the Meaning, uniform? well, we, we generally talk in terms of players are numbered in the NBA just for the sake of talking. Right. One, two, three, four, and five. One being the point guard, five being the center, four is the power forward, three is the small forward. So when we draw and talk so that they understand what, what they're watching, if this is Chris Mills as our three man, we'll put a three there. If this is our center, we'll put a five there. If this is our two guard, we'll put a two there. And then four could be outside and one could be in this spot right here. By the way, you you did not get me the highest level of quality. Well, it's a, we just, just only our third week of the show, okay. Mike. Just so you know, I understand. The budget will increase as the viewers <laughs> pick up here. But then we go you back. Yeah, i got to pay for all these cigars for Boy Sherman. So, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And then we just go back telling them what we're trying to do right now. If we want a little screen away action and you know who we're bringing to the ball, if we need a safety valve to pop out. And then what we're trying to do in uh, a certain amount of time, we if there were any substitutions to be made, we would have made them before we drew this up on. We ask them again, does everybody understand what we're doing? If not, ask, speak up. They all learn to speak up because they have a decision. Either if you're a little shy and you don't want to speak up, you decide whether is that worse or is it worse not knowing, going out there, messing up the play, and dealing with the wrath of the staff after that. Well, all right, let me ask you this. You get into the fourth quarter of the game, and, and you know it's going to be a nail-biter. It's going down to the wire. Do you have a good idea in your head with 10 minutes left in the game what that play is going to be, or do you wait till the timeout and, and get a feel for it, or do you have five different options? What do you, what do you have? What's going through your head? Uh, I keep cards on me, index cards, and on there are special plays for all the situations. They may change as the year goes on. We change it periodically. And the day of the game, we may have practiced two plays that we say at the end of the game, if we need a special right. play, this is what we're running tonight. And we go over it so that the timing and the execution, you know, has a better chance of succeeding. That may change. The players may change. A guy who in practice that morning, for example, we may have had Chris Mills being the guy that was going to take the shot, or, you know, as your first option. Right. Let's say Chris is fouled out of the game. So now you draw the same play that you practice, but Chris Mills isn't in there. You've got some Donnie Marshall could be in there, Antonio Lang could be in there instead. Uh, you may run a different play because of that at that time. Uh, but basically, you try to at least make them familiar with it so that at the end of the game, if you go to it. Will those two plays be the same the next night and the night after that, or does it depend on your opposition and who's hot and who's not? Well, By the way, what, that's a final now? 7-6, to six, the Indians win, Mesa gets a save. Okay, so you didn't miss anything. Thank you. Um, all coaches uh, you know, do things a little bit differently, but some coaches – have a play or plays that are their pet ones that they use, and if it's successful tonight and they play tomorrow night, you may see it again tomorrow night. Right. Uh, other guys change on a rate. They divide the season up into quarters or thirds and rotate their plays through as the season goes on. You know, despite all the work you put in and the coaching staff puts in and the players put in, how much of it might be ad lib? How much, you know, do you draw a play in the dirt, so to speak, or, or doesn't that happen? Uh, it happens. It, it happens. I, I, I would be lying if I, if I said that coaches don't draw things up all of a sudden that maybe they haven't practiced before, but your chances of it succeeding are not as great uh, as they are with the play mm -hmm. that the players are comfortable with. Do you, when you look at the game, the NBA game, do you, it, I know you're coaching and you're involved in it, but do you ever shake your head and say, God, these guys are good, or how did they, how'd that guy do that? Or do you ever find yourself, you know, kind of staring in amazement, or have you seen it all before? Uh, the biggest difference, uh, when I first came into the league many years ago, uh, at the end of the first year, what I said was in college basketball, because I had come from eight years of college basketball into the NBA, in college basketball, you may have one or two guys on your team that when they shoot the ball, you say to yourself, that's got a chance of going in. The rest of them, you really don't believe it's right. going to go in. 
Mm-hmm. In the NBA, when they shoot the ball, you think every shot is going right. in, and right. it's unusual when it doesn't because that's how good they are. Hey, Half, are you up there? You sleeping? Yes, I am. Hi, Coach. How are you? Real good. How are you? Well, I'm a little disappointed in some of the uh, some of the directions and instructions that you gave me for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Well, I, I was under the impression that I did not have to be here until the baseball game ended. I tried to get you my two impressions. Uh, That's if the game were on Sports Channel. That's right. Which is tomorrow night. If you were going to be here tomorrow night, you wouldn't have to be here. Well, that was, that was left out of the initial <laughs> explanation. <laughs> no, half. I just wanted to mention, uh, Mike, I don't know if you know, I have been the play-by-play uh, voice of three teams that have folded in Cleveland. I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, the uh, competitors, which is a pro softball team, the Crusaders uh, World Hockey Association, and the Thunderbolts uh, Arena Football. Uh, I folded a radio station, and as half reminded me, I was on your last show a uh, year and a half ago or so um, from the Gund Arena, the last Mike Fratello show. Apparently, I must have folded that one, too. I'd like to apologize. So you, you, you've you added me to your list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, an, it's an ongoing list. Hey, Les, yeah. I think Mike's returning the favor to me. <laughs> 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 you know, I also have regards to you. Uh, I guess, I don't know if you were classmates. Or, do you remember a Tony Keller's? Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Good I shortstop. I mean, I hear about what an outstanding athlete he was. Yeah. From, he said, Not just bad. check out with Les and, and Not ask bad. him. Yeah. He was um, the only guy at uh, Brush High School who could actually touch the net. Um, we, we, you know, 5'11 was about as high as we went in those days. Well, he, he told me to uh, mention his Good name man. to you. Good man. I want to ask you about, about the New Jersey-New York connection. It seems like, you know, you got the, the Hubie Brown there's a whole tree that follows that, and then there's other trees around the country. How, how did that all happen, or, or what was that like 20, 25 years ago when you guys were all starting coaching? It's truly really interesting if you go back and, and look at the people that came out of that uh, North Jersey, New York City area and wound up going into coaching uh, a lot of areas, not just basketball, but if you just look at the basketball area, and so many came uh, as an offshoot from a guy named Al Labalbo, who was – a high school basketball coach for many, many years in the Elizabeth, New Jersey area. And so many of Al's uh, former players went on to coach. Then Al wound up being Bobby Knight's assistant. When Bobby Knight got the job at Army, West Point, he hired Al LaBalbo. When Bobby wrote the book, Let's Play Defense, which is sold, I can't tell you how many copies of that paperback has been sold. That's a lot of Al's book right there. You know, okay? Bobby's first job was as an assistant coach at Cuyahoga Falls High School here. In, in I the did Akron not know area. that. Yeah, that I was did his not first know that. job. Uh, he, he wound up uh, staying with Bobby X number of years. Then he eventually took the Fairleigh Dickinson University job in New Jersey, North right. Jersey. But you start talking about Lou Campanelli's and Rolly Massimino's. And, you, know, you mentioned Hubie Brown already, uh, Richie Adubato, Brian Hill, Orlando Magic right now, the people out of New York City, the Billy Cunninghams. There, there are so many that came out of that area that went on to coach basketball at the collegiate level and on into the pro game. Herman Cull from Cliffside Park, New Jersey, who was you know with Sacramento for a number of, you know years as an assistant. I I wish I knew the reason why, but it was just like it was a hotbed of of coaches coming out of there. Although that winds up uh, as, as one guy would get a head job, then he'd bring one of his cronies on as an assistant, and then you move on from there. Well, that happens a lot with TV stations and radio stations yeah. as well. Guys help friends out. Yeah, I suppose. I, I it must have been interesting. All learning, you know, that with uh, you didn't mention Dick Vitale in that uh, process. Uh, but I mean, all those guys in that one little group. Dick Vitale, a guy who was at Beckton Regional High School, originally East, East Rutherford High School, then Beckton Regional, had Les Case on, the number one high school player in the country at that time. Uh, everybody was, uh, you know, after him. Dick winds up going to Rutgers University as an assistant basketball coach, right. goes from Rutgers to the University of Detroit as a head coach to the Detroit Pistons. He hires Richie Adubato, you know, and the whole thing snowball. W- would it be fair to say if you took that that clan of, of people you're talking about that your theory on basketball is pretty close? Or do you have, I mean, is that why it became that way or was it the other way around? I mean, because you were together, did you espouse the same theories? Or if you had a different theory, you'd be out of that mix? No, it was uh, really, there, there were a couple places, believe it or not, Les, that after games, high school games would be over, Groups would go to congregate. It was like a local little right. hamburger place, okay, right. that the guys would come and get little pizzas, hamburgers, and they'd sit and talk till 1, 1, 30, 2 o'clock in the morning. As a youngster, I was still in college at that time. I would drive back from the college I was at uh, to help my former high school coach. I would sit and listen to these people talk basketball. And I mean, you'd have all kinds of debates, arguments, you know, what's the right way to do this and that. But these people were basketball bennies. I mean, their life was centered around basketball. Right. 
I mean, outside when the place would close with garbage cans, moving them around, you know, in the street, the offense, defense, that type of thing. And it was just a, a passion for the game from this one area and so many guys who went on to coach. Is, is I, I've made the statement before, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that although I think it's changing, that the college game is, is probably a coach's game because of the recruiting and – I think they have, they have a tremendous impact, and yet the players are the NBA. Is that an unfair statement or a fair statement? Well, I, I think there's a little truth to it. Uh, truth to, to both sides of it. I, I think in college what happens is the, the collegiate situation is, is more controlled. You can control your players more, meaning you can tell them, we're all going to wear Nike right. you know, sneakers. We're all going to wear this. Uh, we're doing this. We're doing that. We have rules that we abide by. Uh, they're on full scholarship, et cetera. They're not working on land investments and, you know, commercials usually, that type of thing. Cell phones aren't ringing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of interesting, that little statement right there. But Well, that's a Magic jo that was Magic Johnson's complaint there. It sounds like that happened today maybe. It, to uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in the NBA, you're dealing with corporations. You have 12 corporations. Each have a lot of other things going on on the outside. And the allotted time for basketball is fit into their daily, daily schedule, whether it's two hours, three hours, four hours that you right. say block out. Uh, and you deal with them accordingly. It's a different mentality. It's a different mindset. Plus, they've got all that money in the bank before they step foot on the court, which I think is a little twisted. Uh, it's very hard nowadays uh, for the general public to really understand. I, I spoke today down in Canton at the uh, Hall of Fame luncheon, the Football Hall of Fame luncheon down there, and I tried to tell the people there were a lot of questions about salary cap, and it's not really true. It doesn't mean there's a cap when you can sign one guy yeah. for $30 million. What's the cap mean? But what I tried to make them understand was probably a better way of looking at the NBA and the players is this way. We are a, uh, we're in this thing together. This is a partnership. We have a partnership that was formed between the NBA and the Players Association. And if you look at it that way and, and understand as a business person what a partnership is all about, limited partners, whatever it is, as the group does well, then you all prosper from it. And the arrangements are then made through the negotiations of the contract between the Players Association and the league. So when you see players doing well with their contract, it's because the league is flourishing. And right. if you have a partnership, everybody is supposed to do well. That's the bottom line. Do you think before Magic and Bird showed up in the late 70s, do you, do you think if that didn't happen, that whole thing of Boston, L.A., and who they were and all that stuff, do you think you'd be talking about the million dollars, millions of dollars we're talking about now? No. When I entered this league many, many years ago, this league was in trouble. There were too many perceptions, and uh, it was in a doomed league with drugs, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, at the time, Larry O'Brien was uh, great in the, on the political scene, and he was a figurehead that was put in place in the NBA office. But as far as marketing the product and making a change for the better, it wasn't happening at that time. And then David Stern was named commissioner of the NBA, and there was no question that David Stern, okay, along with, the arrival of a Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, when all those things happened, it turned the league around, all the way around. I mean, you talk about going from where people were shaking heads, how many franchises were going to fold, and people being nervous about the existence of the NBA, to where we are today. Yeah. We need a break here shortly, but I, you were at the ball game. I know you were, were you working out with the team uh, the other day, or, uh, or just hanging around batting practice? Came down, tried to get in the cage, and uh, coach, uh, you know. Grover was a little tough on me. He said I wasn't in my proper uniform, so he wouldn't <laughs> let me take my swings. He said I wasn't dressed appropriately. So. Your, your buddy uh, Tommy Lasorda out in uh, in L.A. Uh, this has to be tough for him now because they're 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 either going to make the playoffs as a wild card or uh, a champ. Do you th do you think he want he'll look elsewhere next year, or, or what do you think? I, I wouldn't be surprised. I I would say that. And by the way, it was his 69th birthday. We spoke to him yesterday and wished him happy birthday. Um, I think he will look at what happens in the next couple of months, see how he feels. And if he's feeling good, his weight is down right now, he was in great spirits, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, if somebody's interested and, and, and the right thing comes along. But he'll be very selective as to where he goes because he, well, he, can be. he has such a passion for the game yeah, and wants he, it to be he right. He sure does. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. Mike Fratello is with us, and uh, we're going to have a surprise for you. Cindy from Alfonso's has brought the – did you eat tonight? A little snack. A little snack. Just a slight snack. So you have room. I, there's a little room left. Yeah. Okay. Cindy from Alfonso's will be in. Mike Fratello is in. We'll take your calls, and we'll come on back live on Sports Channel.
let's get back to more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Welcome back, more Sports Channel and Les Levine. Uh, we're here till 11 o'clock tonight. Our special guest is Mike Vitello. Mike, if you didn't show up, I, I had my New York Times puzzle book. I was, I was going to do it. You know, if I didn't show up, I'd be with my group of guys that we always eat together on Monday nights, and right now there's one chair that's empty. Uh, Wh where would that be? Well, you know, we've started to rotate around now because we'd always gone over to Pete Mazzano's yeah, place, sure. and, and now with Pete passing on, this is kind of like an experimental stage for us. Every Monday night for the last couple of weeks, we've been experimenting to see if we're going to come up with the new, Lenny's. the new right place. Corky and Lenny's is a Jack's I'm Deli. I'm not sure Jack Corky and Lenny's fits into exactly the kind of food. Cindy from Alfonso's will be here uh, soon. Let's go to some calls. We're going to go to, uh, let's go to Tony. Tony's in East Lake. Hi, Tony. Hi, how you doing? Good. How about you? Not bad. How you doing, Mike? Good, Tony. How are you? Oh, pretty good. All right. Anybody got a question? Uh, how would you rate the European talent now in Europe? Especially, I've seen you guys. Well, I'm, I'm Croatian, so I, I remember reading the Croatian newspapers. You, you season guys. ticket holder yet? Uh, no, not yet. If they would have got the Croatian, I would be. <laughs> nah. Hey, uh, I got a question, though. Uh, you know, I was reading the paper, and they had a rumor in there that, uh, well, now eventually it was in papers here. You guys were after Spoko Vrankovic. But then also it was in the Croatian papers where you guys were maybe after Arian Komazets. Have you heard of him? Yes, Is I that have. that maybe true? Was well, that true? Maybe you guys were after him? We were involved with Brankovic. Uh, I mean, we we took trips over there. Uh, Wayne Embry and myself both flew over to watch him play in the finals over there of, of the uh, uh, the Greek League championships. His team was playing in, in the championship there uh, series. And we were very involved with him. And then uh, when a series of things took place, we kind of changed our direction that we were heading in because of the monies and years involved and because we were trying to get under the cap to make a move uh, in the future. Uh, we basically felt that at his age to sign him to a four-year contract and drive us back over the cap again was not exactly what we wanted to do. So we kind of eased out of that situation, and he eventually wound up signing recently with Minnesota. Good out of Cincinnati. Andre, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going, Les Mike? Good. How about you? Hello, Andre. I had a question for you. Uh, I wanted to know how come you didn't actively pursue uh, Kenny Smith when he was a free agent with uh, Terrell Brandon and injuries last year. Uh, really needed a backup point guard, uh, could have moved a couple spots up in, in the playoff picture there. Well, keep in mind, one, Kenny Smith as a free agent, and he came out and said it himself, was looking for a team where he could move in as a starter, show that he still could play in this league for another couple of years, and then renegotiate and hopefully get another two or three years onto the contract. In our situation, with Terrell being as young as he is and, and playing as well as he has played, uh, we needed a guy whose mentality was more like, I may get 12, 14 minutes a night. We watched our young player, Reggie Geary, who was our second-round pick. We watched him in Minnesota. And we really liked what we saw out there. He's 6'2", 6'2 and a half, very athletic, strong. We like his defensive toughness. And he fits in more with the youth movement that we have right now than a guy like Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith has had a great career. He's a terrific person. Uh, but for us, going the direction that we're going in, uh, if we bring anybody else in right now that's a veteran, it would be that it's an understanding it's for this year and this year only because we're not going to drive our cap number up. You know, one of the things that changed about your game and, and football is is now when you look at your one through five position, for example, you, you now think in terms of I need a, a two guard who makes a million two or I need a, you know, a, a forward or a three or a four or whatever who makes a million six. You, you don't just think of, you know, when we used to trade uh, trading cards or if you talk about trades on a sports talk show, you, the the money factor is, is every bit as, as, as important as the position and the talent. Well, what you're going to find out now is uh, this new collective bargaining agreement kind of settles in, and, and some of the players have found out r yeah. quickly. A little and, and too late. It was a rude yeah. awakening. Yeah. What you're going to find out is you're going to have X number of veteran players sitting around at the end of August with no contracts, right. nowhere to go, and the best offer they're going to get is the minimum amount of money. And their decision is going to be, do I go to Europe right now and take – maybe $800 million offer, or do I stick around and try and play with an NBA team right. for $247,000 and, and try and make good there and get a contract in the future? This, isn't happen this has never happened before like this to the NBA guys. So yeah. eight, nine, ten-year veterans are facing this right now. Yeah. Let's go on to St. Mary's. We'll say hi to Doug. Hi, Doug. Hey, how you doing? Good. Life? How are you? Good. I got a question. Uh, I was wondering, Coach, what are you looking to do with uh, Vitaly Potopinko? Is he going to be a four or five? I, I would probably say that he's going to play both positions. We're going to give him minutes at both spots right now. 
he is a natural four man, 6'10", 280 pounds, 10% body fat, runs the floor pretty well. He's got a mean streak in him, which I love, and he's all business when he steps on the floor. But to get him more minutes this year, I may play him at both spots. Yeah, that was – I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a question I had. I'm a Wright State uh, season ticket holder, so I've seen V a lot. He does have a mean streak. Did you see the uh, incident with Devin Davis against uh, Miami of Ohio? No, the big question, if you are a season ticket holder, I want to know, do you go over to Mama DeSalvo's you and, got that right. and eat dinner at all? Because that's <laughs> – I mean, that's the important thing right now. If you get over there and get a good meal with Bobby and Mama and – and Nikki, the brother over there, I mean, that's a terrific place down that area. Great place to eat. Thanks thanks for the call. Hey, Hef, uh, Mike's putting in more plugs than I am. Mike, are you busy on Thursday? You might want to go over to Sutton Hardware for their 50th anniversary. Something going on there. I'll try and stop by. Yeah, 2225 St. Clair Avenue. It'll be from 10 in the morning until 4. All the major power tool companies. Do you have a need for power tools? Or power forwards, probably. Power forwards. Well, they have forward. power tools. They'll be in attendance, and you'll have a chance to win some great door prizes. There are refreshments there. You can win trips. White water rafting trips. You can win trips for two to the Bahamas and uses of a limo for however long you need it. That's this Thursday at Sutton Hardware. That's at 22nd and St. Clair in downtown Cleveland. Mike Fratello is with us, and we'll find out how good Alfonso's food is for Mike when we come back live on Sports Channel. Throughout history, great men have been ridiculed when they've tried to go against the tide of common opinion. Men like Columbus, Magellan, and Copernicus were chastised by their peers only to be proved correct later. In Cleveland, we have such a man, one who is not afraid to take controversial stands, a man who marches to the beat of a different drum. Ladies and gentlemen, it's more Sports Channel and Les Levine. More Sports Channel than Les Levine. Mike Fratello has uh, signed in the place of honor here on our football that we will Figure out a way. Did I say charity? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I didn't mean charity. I didn't mean we're going to give it away to some listener, some viewer somehow. So uh, that'll be at the end. We have the lovely. I'm changing my name. I would to, like to, to charity? charity. Les, I'd like to know why the pen that I signed with was much thinner and not as dark as you, some of the other people. You were late, here, late today. Okay, the, the, the thicker, bigger pen was here By at, way, at uh, 10. Les, yes. It's 17 laps. 17 laps. You. Uh, what, what would you do if somebody was late, late for a uh, team meeting and they said, I didn't think I had to be here till after the game? Well, I <laughs> would smile at them as they walked in and then <laughs> said, welcome to practice. Just tell them to look at their next paycheck. When it's a little <laughs> bit light, they'd understand why. Well, we have Cindy from Alfonso's at West 130th in Sprague. And Cindy has, uh, what has Cindy done to us? Hi, Cindy. How are you? Hi, Les. How are it's you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. What do you have here for I us? I brought lots of food because I know Mike likes Italian food. And Love pasta. it. Love well, it. I, what is that? I, I, this is our pasta Milan, and Les, I know you like our spaghetti. Yes, I do. Sauce. Yes, I do. Okay, so I brought that for you. I didn't want, well, you, we to can't, you, know, I didn't want you to feel left out. Wait a, wait a minute. Hold on. If he what? likes spaghetti with yeah. meat well, sauce. Well, I'm, I'm rigatoni. Yeah, I mean, you can't run that by me. That Cindy's that never oh, been yeah. in the kitchen. I'll I'll Cindy has no clue how to cook this right. thing. I, I don't cook. Just checking You know, out. I wish I could say I cooked this for you, uh -huh. Mike, but I did My contract will not allow me to use a wine glass without a Sports Channel logo on it. Oh, we didn't. We didn't get one of those for All you right. last year. We better check what, what type we have here. This Merlot? Do you like I didn't know what to bring Merlot or Chianti. You I like Chianti. Usually Chianti, Chianti this time of night, but anyway. I, I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. had Chianti. <laughs> we understand. All right. It's but getting anyhow, out of hand. Oh, wait a minute. What? So anyhow, so this is our pasta Milan, but I didn't make it. I don't cook. Les knows that. That's correct. She has I no clue where the I kitchen is at Alfonso's. But anyhow, my little, my little Italian Mary made this for you. All right. So anyway. It's pasta Milan with sausage. Red peppers, green peppers, onions, and I brought this napkin for you because you know what, Mike, he is, I have to say this, you are the best dressed man in Cleveland. You I don't want to get any sauce on my tires. I, I don't want you to get any sauce or okay. anything okay. on you. Here, you know what, Hi. if he does get sauce, let's use no. this. <laughs> We're going to no. use this <laughs> yeah, we can as use the that. napkin. I hope you smear it <laughs> all can, over there. Why don't you that. just take all that. that sauce and throw it at that thing? Right. Baltimore we'll Ravens. We'll we don't want you to get dirty. Maybe By the way, Mike is the best dressed guy in Cleveland. He but, is. But in addition, we're going to help him because uh, for being our guest tonight, he's going to receive a gift certificate from uh, Hugo Boss Factory Outlet. All right. I know where you really do your shopping, but you'll go to Hugo Boss for this. No, I, I go to Hugo. You uh, kidding? Margaret, Margaret is the best. She, Margaret runs that place over there. Uh, Dick Horton, for all the years that he was there, those people have been great. 
Well, right now they got the Big Ten sale going on. Joseph and Vice oh, hey, Ten oh, Sale. What? Yeah, absolutely. You go, boss. Oh my God. Oh, you can't see. We're not. Well, we got a. We got something going on when we come back. Uh, but right now they've got suits reduced to 159 dollars. Sport coats to 69. Slacks to 39. The Hugo Boss Factory Outlet 2149 West 53rd Street in Cleveland. And of course, Cindy from Alfonso's West 130th in Square. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Les. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you, Mike. Great. Thank you. It's time for How Come Quickies. Quickies. Uh, we're on. All right, we've had a bad run of quickies lately, so we're not going to do them tonight. Besides, I have Mike Fratello here, so why would I want to give up that opportunity? Mike, if you do spill something on, on your shirt or your jacket, take it to... I also know you go to Avon Dry Cleaners. Mark is the best, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Why would How you go anywhere that? else other than Avon? This Avon Dry Cleaners, 18th and Superior. Tough to do a show and eat at the same Don't time. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll talk well, about Avon. you're talking about Avon, then yeah. I have time to, to talk. Avon or, hey, how about? Hugo Boss. You, you got it all. You this mentioned, is, this you is mentioned unbelievable. Hugo. It was unbelievable that it just popped up at this time. And if I mentioned uh, out of the park, Chevy, Chevy, Mike, Chevy, Chevy vehicle. You got it out there. <laughs> you want to go outside? <laughs> you know, the, uh, hey, look, <laughs> look at, the, <laughs> look at the, these <laughs> plugs, <laughs> these unabashed, uh, blatant plugs. It's unbelievable. Avon Dry Cleaners, 18th and Superior. And uh, they do the visiting players when they come into town. They do Mike Fratello's clothes. Uh, they do my clothes. They do over 50 hotels in Greater Cleveland. Get your items in by 11. Get them out by 5. Mark at Avon Dry Cleaners will get it done for you. I forgot to do thistle down. Do you mind if I do thistle no, down? No, take your time. Please. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> Full card simulcast has hit Cleveland, and it's headquartered at Thistle Down. Record handles have been achieved since Thistle Down has been opening both day and night. In addition to the heart pounding excitement of live races, you can now bet on the full cards of races from all across the country, places like Arlington, Belmont, Calder, and many, many more. And harness fans are welcome too, and they can enjoy the racing at Red Mile, Freehold, and many, many more. Enjoy seven days a week of racing. Come for lunch and stay for dinner. Hey, Hi, Les. Yes. Let's take a call. I'm enjoying talking to Mike. He's eating. I don't, it doesn't matter. I'll listen. Don't worry. Okay. Why should I take a call? I could talk about People Express at 248 okay. 307. If, if, if Mike had called People Express, he'd have been here on time, for goodness sakes. Mm. All right. I think I'm pretty much cut up. We'll make these good tomorrow in the business. <laughs> Speaking of the business, mm -hmm. how did. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> don't let me interrupt. Oh, please. How did working uh, on NBC with, with uh, as color commentator. Number one, it gave you a little sabbatical from the, the rigors of coaching. Number two, did it give you a different outlook or a different approach and a different when you did come back to coaching? It was good. It was a good, uh, good layoff for me. I had been in coaching uh, you know, high school, eight years in college, uh, then in the, uh, in the NBA at that time for, gosh, six or seven as an assistant and then seven as a head coach, another 13, I guess, years in the NBA. So after 22 years, all of a sudden, you're faced with, you know, the midlife crisis. I'm out of work. What am I doing now all of a sudden? I had that a month ago. Well, <laughs> I never faced – I never had to really think about what was I going to do next. Yeah. I just always thought I was going to coach, you know, at some level. And now when uh, your contract runs out and you're not renewed, which is a nice way of saying you've been fired, you all of a sudden say, what am I doing? And I was lucky. Uh, I, I need to thank the TNT people because they came after me with the first offer, the big first big offer, and NBC then – came right behind them and, and, you know, will you top this type of offer? Yeah. But you're, you're a natural for it, though. Well, it was it was the people I worked with, Les. I mean, to break in with – my audition was done with Bob Costas, and then I wind up being paired up with Marv Albert, I mean, two Not of the bad. best in the business. And, Not bad. Uh, to watch them and see the preparation. You know, there's, there's so many similarities. You think these people come on, they have so much natural talent on the air. Yet when you watch the preparation, you understand how bright and well-read – I mean, Marv Albert's a guy who carries shopping bags around with him on planes filled with newspapers from all over the country. He has a daily news service that ships him papers every day so he can stay up on what's going on. Bob Costas is up in his room before he goes on the air with a person who just has cue cards that he reads through with Costas, and it's like a memory bank for him. Bob hears it one time. They take the cue yeah. card, throw it away, and it's filed. Yeah. All right, let's, should we take a call? Sure. Bill's in Parma. Hi, Bill. I got a comment and a question. Go ahead. First, I'd like to invite Mr. Fratello and Mr. Massimino to a dinner on me at Massimo de Milano. Is Second. the bridge fixed yet? Can we get over the bridge finally? <laughs> They've been working on the bridge forever, haven't they? 
Uh, secondly, I'd like to know how much input Mike had in drafting Iggy and Potty over uh, Rashid Wallace. Rashid, Rashid Wallace. Wallace, you were about a year late on that. Oh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the John guy from Wallace. Syracuse. Yeah, John Wallace. Sorry. See, a lot of people have brought that up, and a lot of people were disappointed tonight that we uh, did not take John Wallace. If we would have taken John Wallace, that was not going to solve our problem of being a short, small basketball team. We had to get big somehow. We had to get size. We had to get strength. And Wallace probably will wind up uh, as a small forward in the NBA, maybe a big forward, but a small or big forward. We needed size. We needed, we needed the, the combative people that could go in and hold their ground against some of these big guys that you have, the, the Oakleys. And, you know, Shaq was beating everybody up in the East at that time, Ewings and those kind of guys. So we took a 6'10", 280-pound player and a guy who at 21 years old was just under 7'3". I'm not saying Wallace isn't a good player, but we needed to address our needs. Wallace also is not Michael Jordan because you can always say you'll take greatness and not worry about what your needs yeah. are. Well, he also had three weeks of sensational basketball that everybody did see. But, but also, I think fans like to see athleticism. They like to see flash, which they're not going to get with these guys. That you no, got. these guys are meat and potato guys. Yeah. I mean, they're you know, blue-collar workers uh, who come in and do the things that you ask of them, and they're not the, they're not the high-wire walkers that yeah. we like to see you know, operate. Seven Hills, uh, Ron standing by. Hi, Ron. Great show, Les. Today? Uh, so, uh, every day so far, except tomorrow, and I'm sure I'm starting on Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow, that's because <coughs> Mike's friend, uh, Mr. know Mike Trevisano, will join us tomorrow. I can't wait exactly. to see that. <laughs> Mike was just saying he watches the show every night, except maybe not tomorrow. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> uh, question for uh, Mike Fratello. Uh, all, money being equal, would you rather be a coach in uh, the college ranks or the pros? I mean, are oh. the pros really that much, di that difficult to deal with, or is it... Uh, is it egos that you have to deal with, or w what's your opinion on that? Well, it's, it's yes to all the questions you asked there, but uh, the bottom line is if it's college versus the NBA, there's no question I'd rather be in the NBA coaching because uh, this is – it's the purest form. It, there's not college recruiting. There's not the alumni to deal with. There's not mothers and fathers, that type of thing that you – well, in some cases there's mothers and fathers, okay. Really? But, well, of course, it, Kobe Bryant's dad. Oh, yeah, you okay. know, I mean, okay. there's things like that you, you deal with all the time, but – uh, you're talking about basically doing what you want to do. Coach in practice, coach on the floor, go to the next city the next night, get ready for the next game. All the trips in between to speak to alumni groups and all that stuff, that's not what it's about here. And the talent level, as I said earlier in the show, the talent level is all 12 people on your team probably were all Americans somewhere along the line. Whereas in college, you may have, uh, if you're an upper-level program, maybe you've got four guys that are good but, players, but they five listen guys. listen to you better, don't they, at the college I, I, I think listening it comes from a respect factor, and if there's a mutual respect that exists between the players and, and the coaching staff and the kind of players that you have, high character level, uh, I mean, I, I think we all have our jobs to do. I think that's how we sell it to our players. We ask of you certain things. You ask of me certain things, and then we're in this thing together. This is not... Too many people go into it that there's a line of division here. You're the good guy, bad yeah. guy thing. That's not how it is. Yeah. We're, we're all in this we're thing together. We're yeah. the same team. All right. We got to go, Mike. Our uh, time is up, and I, I really appreciate you, you stopping by tonight. And you, uh, you fly down to Wright State, and you open up uh, camp next week. Right? We're a week away. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Mike Trevisano. Wednesday, uh, we'll have Joe Colley and Terry Smith. The guys in the know, Hal Lebovitz and Joe Tate on Thursday. Al Baba Baker joins us on Friday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.